Hello, my name is Jane from Christians Against Poverty. Thank you for inviting me to join in your weekly worship at Whitton Methodist Church. I'd far rather be with you in person, but thank you for allowing me to speak to you in your homes. I've been working for CAP now for just over eight years as debt centre manager in Guildford, helping people struggling with unmanageable debt. And it's been quite a journey over those eight years. And I've learnt a lot in that time. But I think, I think lockdown may be the, the strangest part of that journey so far. I have learnt a lot, but it has been a very odd time. I wonder what you have learnt during this time. I'd like to start by going back 2000 years to Jesus' start of his ministry uh, an amazing two or three years that changed the course of history and he had a very unconventional start to his ministry. He was led into the wilderness for 40 days and Luke and Matthew both tell us how straight away after his baptism by John he went into the wilderness and fasted and was tempted by the devil. So there's something about those 40 days that had to happen before everything else could happen. Something had to be learned in the isolated wilderness. So how have these last few months felt for you? Perhaps isolated wilderness is quite a good way of describing it. Perhaps you've been missing family and friends, and I know I have, particularly my little grandson who's too young to understand that Granny can't give him a cuddle. Or perhaps you felt powerless in this situation, and we are in many ways, and we're longing for some light at the end of the tunnel. Perhaps you've had that experience of someone saying to you, I know how you feel, and you look into their eyes and you think, do you really, do you know how I feel? Here's what I see when I look at Jesus in the wilderness. I see a God that gets it. We see that he wasn't just content to know it as the one who created us, who invented emotions, who knit us each together. No, in Jesus he chose to know through the reality of human experience. How incredible is that? That means that through Jesus, God has true empathy with us. When we know someone has empathy with us, it changes everything. Just maybe this lockdown time, this shared experience is teaching us greater empathy for the isolated. Today I want to talk to you about one group in particular. At CAP we partner with churches to tackle poverty in their communities and especially debt. So we're a little bit like a lifeboat station giving churches the tools and the training and the expert support to launch out from the coast and rescue those who are caught in the storms of life. And last year we asked some of these people how they felt before seeking CAP's help. And their responses were quite shocking, I found. This is some of what they said. Seven in every ten said that they felt isolated. And over a third, 36%, said they were cut off from family and friends because they couldn't afford to travel. And 24% weren't leaving their house for a week or more at a time. So three months of lockdown for us is hard enough. But for many people in debt, this is their daily reality and has been for years on years. It's life on lockdown with no end in sight. And one lovely lady called Tina agreed to share her story with us. And we're going to watch that now. And as we watch it, I just invite you to let your lockdown experiences, your experience of loneliness, or maybe a sense of freedom when restrictions started to lift, let those experiences help you to empathise with Tina's story.
my neighbours didn't know what situation I was in. To walk past the house, no, you wouldn't know. The only thing you think is, oh, that person keeps their curtains closed. You don't know what goes on behind closed doors. The one thing I didn't want was to be judged. You put a front on to people. I won't have a cup of tea because I've only got a quarter of a pint of milk that's got to last me a week. You make excuses. Oh, the boiler's not working today, so I can't put the heating on, sorry. Oh, the bulbs are blown, sorry. I'd go around and take the bulbs out. My bedtime became sort of four or five o'clock in the evening because I couldn't read by the lights I had and or do my cross stitch or anything like that. Collect the post once in a blue moon, big pile of letters and it, we want this, we want this, we want this. You can't have it, there's just nothing left. You don't see an end. And as much as people tell you there's an end, there isn't. You're living, not day to day, I was living minute to minute. And the only answer I could see was, if I'm not on this earth, you can't get anything from me. Although one and a half million people haven't got enough food to eat, heating for their home, or even a place to call their home, right here, right now in the UK. Poverty is in every community, often hidden behind closed doors. I know what it's like to not have enough to feed your children. I know what it's like to have to leave home. And that's why I started CAP 23 years ago. We offer award-winning debt counselling. We have job clubs and we offer courses that help people with life skills and dependencies. Every one of our life transforming services is run in partnership with a local church just like yours. Whenever CAP partner with local churches, lives are transformed and poverty is relieved. Every year together, tens of thousands of lives are touched by the work of CAP and the local church. But most importantly, around a thousand people choose to respond to Jesus. On her own, Tina had absolutely no chance of resolving her debt situation. But once the local church and Cap were on the scene, things began to change dramatically. It was a relief when Ruth came home because for once it was someone that wanted to listen to me, that wasn't getting paid to listen to me. And I sobbed, I broke my heart. She then said, right, we're gonna help you here. They will sort you a budget out that gives you money that I can go shopping where I could open the post and just put it in an envelope and send it to Ruth or keep it for her next visit. Such a relief to be able to get up in the morning and open your blinds and your curtains and you see sunlight instead of a dark room. You know, and I remember going to church after I went debt free. You all right? Yep. I went debt free the other day. Yeah, and you know, and everyone was genuinely pleased that I'd done it as well. And through the coach journey, I started going to my local Baptist church and it started with restoring my faith. I got baptised and it was like a piece of my wall that I put up came down, but also another weight got lifted with the support of my father and the support of the churches and the people around me. I can now start rebuilding my life. What if Tina was your neighbour, or your mother, or your sister? Common reasons for debt include ill health, redundancy, and relationship breakdown. And especially right now, this is happening to people all across the country who didn't expect that it would be happening to them. People are being furloughed, they're being made redundant, their bills are getting harder to pay. And we're often much closer than we like to think to this sort of experience. For nearly 25 years now, CAP has been helping people to break free from the prison of debt. And last year alone, we saw over 2,000 people, 2,000 households go debt free and over 800 people invite Jesus 
into their lives or recommit their lives to him through working with CAP. Jesus, as he emerged from the wilderness, started his ministry by putting people like Tina at the heart of it. Stepping into the synagogue of his hometown of Nazareth, this is what he said. So I'm reading from Luke 4, from verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. As followers of Jesus at this time, emerging from lockdown, how can we do the same? How can we proclaim good news to the poor and proclaim the year of the Lord's favour? It's easy to feel helpless, but we're not helpless. There are things that we can do. Firstly, we can remember as lockdown limb lifts, the temptation is to forget about it. But if you do, you'll miss out. You'll miss out on the empathy that God is giving you for those who are isolated and lonely and feel forgotten. If you hold on to those memories, they can lead you in love and practical action in the months and the years ahead. Secondly, you can look around you. It's astonishing to think this, but many of those in the prison of debt, for them the ending of lockdown is actually a source of dread, a source of fear. Right now, all debt collection is on hold. Debt, collectors, debt collectors are not allowed to visit to collect the debts. But when lockdown starts to end and restrictions are eased, the constant phone calls, and knocks on the door and endless demands for payment will start again. So as we're breathing a sigh of relief, those trapped in debt, perhaps even our neighbours, could be locking the door and closing the curtains. Maybe your friendship forged with somebody, one of your neighbours over clapping for carers on a Thursday evening, maybe that friendship could be the lifeline that that person needs. How could you keep in touch with them in the months to come? Or maybe that person who is struggling is you. However hard you try, the debts keep mounting up. And maybe you don't know where to turn. Well, let me give you a phone number. Our free phone number is 0800 328 0006. Make a choice today to call and take that first step towards freedom or pass the number on to someone else who may need it. That's 0800 328 0006. Or maybe you know someone who's been made redundant or who really needs to change jobs at this time and could benefit from our CAP job clubs. And when lockdown is eased, a little bit more, we will be resuming our life skills courses for people who need some help to manage on a low income and also our fresh start courses for people who are struggling with life controlling habits. You can find out about all of these things on our website, which is www.capuk.org. Finally, as I close, let me extend an invitation to you. CAP is not an exclusive club. It's a nationwide movement of over 30,000 individuals like you and me who have a heart to see people like Tina set free from debt, to see them helped, the good news of Jesus shared and lives transformed, and to do that through giving their time, their finances, and prayer. So my invitation to you today is simply this. Would you text the word HOPE to 84433 to discover how you can be part of CAP and help more people like Tina? I know that your minister Claudia is very keen for your church to get involved 
She's passionate about the work of CAP herself. So maybe you could have a conversation as a church about how you could get more involved. But if you text that number, you'll simply receive a call from someone at CAP who will answer your questions, talk to you about your options for giving or supporting in another way and to help you decide what's right for you. And the text itself doesn't commit you to anything. You'll just have a phone call. It won't cost you anything. Your text is not a gift. It will just cost you what it would normally cost you to text a friend. So if you're inspired, then please don't miss out on your chance to find out more. Take the opportunity in this moment to accept that invitation. I'm just going to pause for a moment to give you a chance to, to think about that, to grab your phone if it isn't a hand or, or a pen so that you can note down the number. Thank you so much for doing that. You have the power to bring hope to people like Tina in your community and we'll be delighted to help you be a part of that. As I finish, let me just leave you with this thought. What if the greatest legacy of COVID-19 was the way it changed our churches, gave us fresh empathy and understanding for those in need, and led us to extraordinary acts of generosity and love? Let's believe that as we remember and look around us and do what we can, God can and will do extraordinary things.